Hey everybody, this is Craig. We're going to do something new today. I'm going to give you my review of Ahsoka. Here's how TV show or movie reviews are going to work on this channel. I'm only going to do reviews of things that have some sort of retro aspect to them. In this case, Ahsoka is a follow-up to both The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels. So I'll probably only do reviews on this channel if there's some sort of legacy component to what I'm reviewing. Anyway, let's get into it. This is a spoiler-free review. I'm not going to ruin it for anybody. So is Ahsoka bad? No. Is it good? Mm, it depends. I found Dave Filoni's directing of the first episode to be very flat and awkward. I mean, even down to the blocking and the movement of the actors, it seemed very poorly choreographed, I guess is a good way to put it. I'll give you an example, and th this won't spoil it for you. There's a scene early on in the first episode where Ahsoka is talking to Sabine, and she wants her help. And she says, oh, I found this map. Very simple, basic, right? And it's not a spoiler because it happens early in the first episode. But the way that it unfolded on screen was very awkward. Ahsoka pulls out the map and just holds it there before even telling Sabine anything. It kind of looked like show and tell, you know, where the kid goes up in front of the class and he holds up the weird object or whatever he got from his parents' house and then starts to tell you about it. Meanwhile, the whole class is wondering what it is. I, it was that awkward. That's not how people act. Normally, the way it would go down, Ahsoka would say to Sabine, I need your help. Oh, why? Because I found a map. And then pull out the map. I need your help with this. I don't know what the thinking was with that, but there's a lot of that in this first episode. And then the other thing that I found very jarring was Hera, the actress who plays Hera, has a resting smile on her face for most of the first and a good portion of the second episode as well. It looks weird, especially if you're a fan of Rebels, because Tara was not a person who smiled a lot. As far as the production value goes, the show looked great, but I will say that it looked more like it was from the prequel era than the original trilogy era. When we watched the first season of The Mandalorian, that did look like it just followed right after Return of the Jedi or a few years later. This thing looks too clean. In many parts, it looks very, very clean. And I don't know if that's just because it was shot on high-def video versus being shot on film, like the original trilogy was. Who knows? But it did have that kind of a feel to it. It did kind of take you out of the, the moment a bit. Now, if you're a fan of the animated series The Clone Wars or Star Wars Rebels, I think you'll enjoy it, but I don't think you'll enjoy it after the first episode. I think... You have to get in a little bit to the second episode to really start to appreciate it. That seems to be a common thing for me when it comes to Dave Filoni. All of his animated series, it took me six episodes to start to like it. And I would suggest for anyone who wants to watch The Bad Batch, Star Wars Rebels, or The Clone Wars, give it six or seven episodes before you make a judgment. Because it seems like those first couple episodes are very weak on character development. And the vibe and flow of the show hasn't quite been set. I will say that first episode didn't grab me until about 35 minutes in. And then it lost me again. So what about the story? Well, we only have two episodes available to watch. Unfortunately, it seems to me like we may not see Grand Admiral Thrawn until the very end. By end, I mean like the last two episodes. I hope they don't do that. I hope they bring Thrawn in in the third or fourth episode, and then it's going up against Thrawn. But if they save him to the last few episodes, then this is really going to feel like a part one, kind of like we felt at the end of The Force Awakens, where we didn't see Luke Skywalker in the whole thing. Till the very, very end. I hope they don't do that. Because I think that would really hurt the show. So do I think you'll enjoy watching Ahsoka? Well, if you're a fan of the Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels, 
I think you probably will, but it'll take a while to get into it. The direction is very awkward in the first episode, and there are parts that kind of drag on. Now, if you've never seen those shows, I think you might be a little lost because they don't do a great job of explaining the relationship these characters have and the backstory that they've shared. As a show, it does look great, and it does look like Star Wars, but it sort of looks a little too clean, almost like Star Wars from the prequel era. So overall, I give it a 6 or 7 out of 10. It's not bad by any means. And if you're a fan of Star Wars in general, I think you'll enjoy it. If you're one of those people that recoils at the goofy Star Wars, this has a little bit of that, but not a lot. Surprisingly, not a lot, given that it is based on the Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels, which are cartoons. So do I think it's worth buying Disney Plus just for this show? No. You would be better off waiting till the show runs and then buying Disney Plus for a month down the line so that you could watch this show as well as a couple other shows. Anyway, that's all I got for this video. This is Craig. Take care of yourself and look out for others. Talk to you later. Bye.